Hello everybody, Lion in a Box here. And today I'm continuing my tutorial series on Codemanus newly released PixelFX Designer 2.0. Today I'm going to be talking about the Node Effects system, an entirely new feature and section that has been added to the program. So let's dive right in and start a new project. I guess it's time to say goodbye to the hyper-pregnant smoking dragon. To begin with, let me just quickly create a second emitter. It will be helpful to explain the node system later on. There we go. If you've watched my previous tutorials, you already know where the different features are located. This entire area below the canvas is part of the node system. You can see that in the beginning the node graph displays only the input node. The input node defines to which areas of your animation the effects should be applied. Right now it is set to all layers, which is perfect because I want to apply the effects to the entire animation. Adding a new effect is quite simple. All you need to do is to click on add node, go into the nodes section and here you can select the effect you want from a long list of effects. Sorry to interrupt the tutorial, but I'm here with breaking news. While I was recording the tutorial, Pixlev X Designer got updated. Now, after clicking on Add Node, you do not go into the Node section, but you have three sections to choose from. You have General, Color and Transform Effects. Back to you, line in the box. For demonstration, I will select the Blur effect. You can see that the Blur effect node has appeared in the node graph. However, the animation is still not blurry and the reason for that is that you have to connect the input node with the effect node first. We do that by clicking on the black dot on the right side of the input node and dragging it to the black dot on the left side of the effect node. As soon as I connect the two nodes, the animation becomes blurry. You can modify and play around with the parameters of the effect. And you will see the effect change on your animation. One more important thing to notice is that you have a little tick box in the top left corner of the effect node. By ticking and unticking it, you can toggle the effect on and off. As you can see me do foolishly, right now. Adding a second effect to the animation is basically the same process. You click on add node, go into the node section again and there you select the second effect that you'd like to add. Let me select the emboss effect. Right now the emboss effect is not being applied because like the first time it yet has to be connected to the input node. However, since this is already the second effect we add, we are not going to connect it to the input node directly, but chain it up instead onto the blur effect node. Now the emboss effect is applied onto the animation as well as the blur effect. Now let's take a closer look at the input node. When I open the drop down list of the input node, I can choose to which layer the effect should be applied. I select emitter 2 and as you can see the emboss and blur effect are applied only to emitter 2 while emitter 1 is normal. In this manner you can select to which layer you want your effects to apply to. Now after we've added effects that only apply to emitter 2, what can we do if we want to add even more effects but that only apply to emitter 1? In order to do so, we will have to add a new node system. You can see that the current node system is called node system 0. To add a second node system, we click on system and then add system. Be careful not to confuse it with new. If you click on new, it will delete all the systems and effects you've created so far. Once we clicked on add system, a new node system has been created. You can switch between each node system 
and modify each note system individually. To now continue adding an effect only to emitter 1, I'm going to select emitter 1 in the new input node. Now I'm going to add an effect, just as I did before. I click on add node, nodes, and for this example I select the brightness effect. Just as before, I'm going to have to connect the effect node to the input node. You still cannot see any difference on emitter 1, but that is because the brightness parameter is set to 0. When I change the brightness settings, you can see that the effect applies only to emitter 1. Exactly what we were trying to do. And just for further demonstration, if I now select emitter 2 in the input node, the brightness effect is applied only to emitter 2. If I select all layers in the input node, the brightness effect is applied to the entire animation. Here are a few tips for better node graph control. When you left click an individual node, you can drag that node around and organize your node graph the way you want to. When you right click and drag inside the node graph, you can move the node graph around for a better view of things. I have mentioned this in the previous tutorial, but the node system works just in the same way for images. Let me import an image. I click on create image, select the image element and then click on load image. Since the image is a little bit small, I'm going to scale it up. You already know the drill. In order to create effects that only apply to the image, I first create a new node system. Inside the input node, I can now select the image that I've created. Once the image is selected, I'm going ahead and add a new effect. I connect the effect node to the input node. And as soon as I increase the amount of the sepia effect, you can see how the brown sepia coloring effect is applied to the image. If now, after we've added individual effects to the different layers, you would like to add some more effects, but that apply to all of the layers, we would simply go ahead and add one more node system. In the new input node, we leave all layers selected we add the new effect node, connect it to the input node, and you can see that now the pixelate effect is applied to all of the layers, both the emitters and the image. And as per usual, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it has been helpful to you. If you liked it, feel free to leave a like or a little comment. And my next tutorial is also going to be about the node system, but I will talk about more advanced features, such as modifiers. That has been all for now. See you in the next video! Psst! Hey! Yes, you! Have you heard the news? It's Eastern time while I released this video. And since you've made it so far into the video, here's a little Easter egg. The first person who listens to this and who leaves a comment below this video with a video suggestion, I will turn their suggestion into reality and make a video about it. So if nobody else has left a comment yet, Leave a comment below starting with topic colon and then leave the suggestion. And don't you dare tell anyone about the secret Easter egg.